In this video, we're going to talk about factors that will affect the resistance of a conductor. Of course, one another factor that will affect is your temperature. As you can imagine that if the temperature of the conductor is higher, the particle will actually vibrate more vigorously about their fixed position, so electrons will have more collision with them, so hindering their movement. So as temperature rises, the resistance will increase. But let's for this video, we're going to assume that temperature remains constant. So what are the, the other factors that will affect? So namely, we have the cross-sectional area of the conductor. We assume it's a uniform cross-sectional area and the length of the conductor and also the resistivity of the conductor. Now let's start with the length L. Alright, so in general, the longer the length of the conductor, the higher the resistance of the conductor. So you can imagine that the electrons, if you were to go through a longer conductor, it has to collide with more particles, therefore it will hinder their movement, so the resistance will be higher. Another analogy you can think of is the electrons is like running a marathon, you'll be tired, so it's like therefore the resistance to run will be higher. So that's one way to help you to remember. Next, let's talk about the cross-sectional area A. And X and Z here, they have the same length. So the only difference is the cross-sectional area where Z have a bigger cross-sectional area. Now we can think of with a bigger cross-sectional area, more electrons are able to flow through easily. All right, it's like a bigger pipe. So the water flow will be higher. So the greater the cross-sectional area, the resistance to flow, the, for the electrons to flow will be lower. Another way of thinking is it's like a tunnel, and another analogy will be a tunnel where this is a single lane, so, and this is a bigger tunnel where there are three lanes, so obviously less traffic jam for the bigger tunnel, Z here, so the bigger the cross-sectional area, the lower the traffic jam, the lower the resistance. Hopefully that will help you. The last factor is your resistivity and the symbol is rho similar to your density and take note resistivity is like unique to the material it depends on the material something like the density of the material so in general the higher the resistivity the higher the resistance for example let's assume x is copper wire and the resistivity you can look check online is 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 8 ohms meter well the nichrome wire that is used for heating element but the resistivity by nature is very high so it's 100 times 10 to the power of minus 8 ohm meters so you can see the higher the resistivity the higher the resistance now one thing to take note is high resistivity is not the same as high resistance so you have to be very mindful of the choice of words here because let's say uh nichrome wire over here has high resistivity does it necessarily means high resistance so it depends if let's say copper wire here the length is let's say 1000 times longer than w right now okay then obviously the resistance of the copper, long copper wire will be much higher than the resistance of the nichrome wire right now. Even though the resistivity of nichrome wire is much higher than the copper. So it depends on other factors like the length and the area which we mentioned just now. Now let's recap the key concept. The longer the length, the higher the resistance. In other words, your resistance is directly proportional to your length of the conductor. For cross-sectional area, the greater the cross-sectional area, the lower the resistance. So in other words, the resistance is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. And lastly, the higher the resistivity, the higher the resistance. So your resistance is directly proportional to your resistivity. So from math, actually with the understanding of this, you can actually combine them into a formula. So you have the formula, the resistance of a conductor depends on the resistivity, the length, and the cross-sectional area. So you can see that because the resistivity and length is directly proportional to the resistance, so they will be placed at the numerator. And 
the cross-sectional area is inversely proportional to your R, therefore it's at the denominator. So that will help you to recall the formula. Next, you must know the SI unit very well. For resistance is ohms. The cross-sectional area is meter square, length is meter, and resistivity is ohms meter. Now, let's say you have forgotten that the resistivity is ohm meter, you think that's ohm per meter. So what you can do is instead of memorizing, you can actually just uh, rearrange, let the resistivity be the subject, and this will be your R A over L. So this the equivalent to the units omega sign here, then meter square over the length which is meter, so you can cancel. That's how you can recall, okay, instead of memorizing, resistivity is ohms meter. Now let's apply what we have learned. The length longer, the resistance will be greater. The cross-sectional area increases, your resistance will decrease, and your resistivity increases, your resistance will increase. And the resistance of the conductor is governed by rho L over A. Now, but most of the time, most of the question in O level, you actually do not need this formula. There's actually an easier way to do it. Of course, unless they give you, for example, R, A, L, and then they ask you to find the resistivity, of course, this formula will be the easiest. And this is in the syllabus for pure physics, not so for the combined science. So you actually just need to know this too, because most of the question, they are the new wires will be of the same material, meaning to say the resistivity will be constant. So let's practice. For example, I will give you an original conductor, which is cross-sectional area A, length L, and the resistance given to you right now is this is 5 ohms. So this is the value here in terms of L, A, and the resistance is 5 ohms. So they'll say that what is the resistance of another wire? Let's consider wire A here. It's of the same material, so but now the difference is if three times longer, the cross-section area is the same. So what is the new resistance of this conductor? So uh, it's in general, you use back the original resistance. Let's start with the 5. Then we always consider the length first. So since it's three times longer, the resistance will be greater. And by how many times? Three times. So it will just be times three, it will just be 15 ohms for the wire A. Next, with reference to this original wire again, but now you have wire B, which is the same length, but the cross-sectional area compared to the original one is two times the cross-sectional area. So what will be the new? resistance. Likewise, with reference to this, you take the original resistance 5 ohms, and due to the length, there's no change, so there's no need to do anything. But for cross-sectional area, it's thicker now, all right? And you know that the thicker it is, the resistance will be smaller. So the resistance has to be smaller. So depends on you, you want to divide by 2 or times half to make the resistance smaller up to you. So the resistance of this new wire will be 2.5 ohms. Next, for wire C with respect to the original, now it's two times longer and three times the cross-sectional area. So likewise, the new resistance of the wire, we take the original 5, due to the length, is double the length, so double the resistance, the resistance should become bigger times 2, and the cross-sectional area is three times bigger so it will reduce the resistance so i'll make it smaller times one third or divide by three up to you so you have 3.3 ohms next for wire d so let's start with the original resistance 5 ohms and because the length is half the length so it's shorter the resistance should be lower so i divide by two to make it smaller and for the cross section area is half also but because the cross-section area decreases, the resistance will be higher. So I, to make it higher, I times 2. So effectively, this will go back to 5 ohms. For the next wire E, all right, the length is 2 thirds of the original length, so it's shorter, so I should make the resistance smaller. So I start with the original 5 and times 2 over 3. 
Now it shouldn't be times 3 over 2 because it's greater than 1, it will make the resistance bigger, which is wrong. And next, let's tackle the cross-sectional area. This new area is only 3 quarter of the original, so in other words, it's thinner. If it's thinner, the resistance will be higher. So I need to make it bigger, so likewise times 4 over 3 instead of 3 over 4, and you'll get your answer 4.4 ohms. Now the last example F here, I want to bring your attention to the radius double. Now you, we are used to the cross-sectional area doubles or half that kind of thing, but now they mention radius. So I want you to understand that radius double does not mean the cross-sectional area doubles. So let's go back, let's assuming it's a, assume it's a cylinder, it's a circle, cross-sectional area, so your area is equals to pi r square. So because pi is a constant, so in other words, your area will be directly proportional to r square. So if it's a new area, new one, all right, and the radius is two times double, the whole thing square, so effectively you have four r square. In other words, four times r square is your original area. So if your radius double, your area actually increases by four times due to the square, all right? Not times two, uh, it's because of the square. So in other words, if the radius is three times, so it will increase by nine times, nine times the area because of the square. With that in mind, all right, you should know that the original is five and because radius double, the cross-sectional area actually increases by four times. So the resistance should decrease by four times. So times one quarter, or if you want, you can put that divided by four. So you have the answer 1.25 ohms. Now, some of you might be wondering what if instead of radius is diameter. So you can see area equals to pi the d over two square. So if you were to bring out the constant, it will be pi over four d square. So in other words, area is directly proportional to your d square. So this, regardless whether it's radius or diameter, so they are the same, okay? Now let's take a look at the last question here. Instead of the user asking you to find the final resistance when you change the factors, they can also ask, give you the final resistance of the new wire and they ask you how long is it or what's the cross-section area compared to the original. So with this as the original wire, they have a new wire which the final resistance is 10 ohms but it's of, uh, they ask you what's the length but the cross-section area is double. So how can you uh, tackle this using the same similar concept? Now, the original resistance is 5 and since they gave you that the area is double, it's bigger, it's thicker now, you should know that the resistance should be lower, so divide by 2. So right now, the resistance of this new wire will be 2.5, but now you're going to think about the length because I want to achieve 10 ohms eventually, so the resistance is going to increase. and the numbers usually are quite nice, so 2.5 to increase to 10 ohms is a factor of 4. So that means to say the length has to be longer in order to increase the resistance to 10 and increase by how many times? 4 times. So the length will be, that's needed will be 4 times the length. So that's how you do. So you can see that uh, most of the O level questions, you can actually just tackle the such question using simple proportion method. Okay, seldom you will need to use the formula R equals to rho L over A unless, I mean, those clear cut questions where you just need to find one of the unknown. So hopefully this video helps you to understand the basic concept and do look at the other video where I show you some O-level questions. All right.